Sí, sí, con eso. Ok, so it is a pleasure to announce the last speaker of the day, who is uh, Alex Massarenti from Fluminense University, and who will talk to us about birational geometry of moduli spaces of points in the line. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, Michele Bolognesi. So, as usual, we'll denote with M0 and the um, modular space of uh, smooth, rational, and pointed curves. And by M0 and bar is the minimum for compactification. And uh, uh, as we know, there is a stratification of the boundary of M0 n, given by the number of nodes uh, you put on uh, the general curve. Uh, uh, in, uh, in a component. So if you take uh, just one node, so something like this, uh, you get a boundary divisor. And uh, uh, if you keep increasing the number of nodes uh, till you get to n minus 4 nodes, you get a curve in uh, m0 n bar minus M0N, which, as we know, uh, is called an F-curve. And uh, the F-conjecture says that uh, uh, the Morricone, so the cone of uh, effective uh, one cycles in M0N, is generated by F curves. So that any uh, effective curve in M0N is a linear combination with positive coefficients of, uh, of F curves. So this conjecture is known to be true for uh, N less or equal than 7. This is due to mainly to Keel and McKernan. And is open for n greater or equal than 8. Okay? So, <clears throat> in this talk, I, I'm going to consider a slightly different compactification, no, a very different compactification of M0n, uh, which is constructed in the following way. So, you start with uh, P1 <coughs> to the n plus 3. So, this is just P1 cross P1 cross P1 n plus 3 times. And uh, you consider on uh, this product the action of uh, PGL2 acting diagonally. And uh, we define sigma m to be uh, P1 to the n plus 3. Here I'm, I'm setting m equal to n plus 3. I'm taking the GAT quotient of this space, IPGL2, with respect to the uh, symmetric polarization. Okay? So clearly, the, a general point here is just the configuration of n plus 3 points on P1, and then uh, M0, n plus 3 sits inside uh, sigma m is a dense open subset. And in general, uh, you have a birational morphism from M0 n plus 3 bar to sigma m, which is the identity on, uh, on the interior, and uh, contracts contracting uh, let's say uh, a piece of the boundary. Okay. So in a certain sense, the uh, the, the boundary of sigma m is less complicated than uh, the boundary of m zero n plus three bar. 
So in this sigma m also you have a stratification of the boundary. And uh, the an what, what's the analog of an f-curve in, uh, in sigma m is something like this. So you take a subset uh, call it, uh, of indices, E1, uh, E, uh, G plus 1 of uh, uh, 1 and plus 3. And you define a curve Li in sigma m. Was there any points corresponds to a curve where the mark points marked by i collide? Other G points collide in, in another point. And the two remaining points <laughs> are uh, separated. So this is a curve, uh, this is a P1 in sigma M. So Li is a smooth rational curve in sigma m, and uh, we have how many? We have uh, uh, n plus 3, choose uh, g plus 1 such curves. See? What? g plus 1, yeah. And here is from 1 to g. Now I'm going to tell you what's g. Uh, such curves. So uh, now the question is question is the Morricone of Dix sigma m generated by the Li? So this is the analog, the analog of the Fulton conjecture for these spaces here. Yeah. Of this thing here. Mm -hmm. So if m is odd, is 1. And if m is even, is uh, m plus 3. Now I'm going to tell you why. So Here, so in that case, for when when it is a surface, is exactly m zero five. So, <clears throat> now let me take uh, this variety here, x m. M plus 2 this is the blow up of uh, PM at M plus 2 general points. Okay? So, what you can prove is that uh, this sigma M is a, a small modification of this blow up. Meaning that you have a aberrational map between the two of them that is small. So this thing does not contract any divisor, and the inverse does not contract any divisor as well. And uh, the fact is that uh, this variety here, xm m plus 2, is, uh, uh, is a modern space. So being a modeling space, so I don't want to define what a modeling space is, but this implies that uh, uh, the effective cone of uh, x m plus 2 m admits uh, a wall and chamber composition 
which is called the Moray Chamber Decomposition. So you have uh, the effective cone. Inside the effective cone, you have uh, uh, the movable cone, with the variety, and I'm going to say what the movable cone is. And uh, uh, you have the composition in convex chambers, something like this. In such a way that uh, this is the movable cone. So basically, movable cone means that an infected divisor, which is which is inside the movable cone, so it's movable. Uh, if base locus is in codimension at least two, so there is no divisor inside the base locus of the linear system associated with the divisor. And uh, uh, this decomposition here of the movable cone tells you what are the uh, the small modification of your original variety. So you may think of a chamber, the central chamber here, for instance, as the nef cone of your original variety, which is in this case is the blow up. And any other maximal chamber here corresponds to an F cone of another variety, which is isomorphic in codimension two to your variety. Okay? So in particular, this variety here, as I said, is isomorphic in codimension two to our variety. So uh, it, must, uh, it must correspond to some of this chamber. Okay? So with Michele, we proved that uh, this thing is uh, that sigma m is fun. Okay? So uh, the, the, anti -canonical, the anti canonical class of this variety here is ample. So in order to understand what's the corresponding chamber, it's enough to uh, locate the anti, the anti canonical divisor of this variety here in this decomposition. He will lie maybe inside a chamber, maybe on a wall or many walls. And uh, if it lies inside the maximal chamber, that chamber is going to be the nef cone of, uh, sigma, of sigma m. Okay? So here, two things happen. If m is uh, 2g minus 1, so is odd. This uh, sigma m is singular. And in particular, it's not two factorial. And uh, minus k x m m plus 3, m plus 2, sorry, lies uh, in the intersection of many walls. Okay, so you have to think of it like uh, uh, the anti-canonical is, uh, for instance, here. Okay. So your variety, your variety does not admit a smooth FANO model. But, and uh, to answer to your question, in this case, the Picard uh, group of this thing is Z. Even though the divisor class group is uh, as rank M plus 3. Okay. But the, the fact is that you have many uh, vile divisors that are not, not Cartier because of these singularities. Okay. But if uh, M is equal to 2G, so it's even, then sigma M is smooth. And min mi minus K uh, sigma M uh, lies in a maximum chamber. So it's uh, inside a maximal chamber. And the, this maximal chamber, as I say, as I said, is going to be its nef cone. OK? So, <coughs> so th this is what G is. So now, if you want to answer to this question, you have, uh, so we know that we have these this many uh, F curves in this space. So of course now this question makes sense just just when the the, the M the, when M is even because when M is odd the Picard group is Z and there is nothing to say. Okay, all the cones are degenerate 
inside the PCAR group. So let me wait again. Yeah. So we have 2G uh, plus 3, 2G plus 1 allies. And uh, uh, indeed, the more chamber the composition, so this wall and chamber the composition that I that I, that I picture here uh, is known for uh, for this particular modern space for the blow up of PM in M plus two points. So the, the, this has been studied by 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 many people, for instance, myself and uh, uh, Carolina Raujo and Mukai and uh, and Castro and Tevelov. So, the more chamber the composition of the effective cone of Xm m plus 3 is known. And, uh, m, uh, the nephcon of sigma m is exactly that number. Extremal phases. So, dually, this says that the Morricon has uh, that number of uh, extremal rays because uh, then the Morricon, as you know, is the, is the dual of the Fcon. Okay? So, now the only thing that is left to prove is that uh, these classes here are indeed extremal. And in order to do that, you have to consider uh, another, a very natural morphism from uh, sigma 2G, so the even version, to the old version. Okay. This is just the, the forgetful morphism, one of the forgetful morphisms, forgetting a mark point. And uh, as I said, this, uh, this variety here is singular. There's finitely many singular points. And this morphism here is a vibration of sigma 2G. And the general fiber of this vibration is just a P1. But on the singular points, if you look at the pre-image of the singular point here, you will see that the pre-image is the union of two PGs. So this is something that looks like a PG union, another PG. Okay. And uh, uh, this Li here can be realized as the class of a line inside one of these PGs. Here you have, and the other one is going to be another, let's call it LJ. Okay. So, what's a curve contracted by this morphism? So, a curve contracted by this morphism is uh, uh, either a general fiber, okay, or uh, a curve, a reducible curve that splits as the union of two reduci reducible components, one in this PG and the other one in the other PG, okay. But since they are they are in this uh, in this family, you can uh, deform the general fiber to the union of. Uh, two lines, one, one, in, one of them in this PG, the other one in, this, in the other PG. So I'm saying that a general fiber is uh, uh, numerically equivalent to D times uh, the line inside this PG and K times the lines in the other PG, okay? So I'm saying that the, the relative Morricone, the relative Morricone of uh, by I is generated by these Li's and uh, these classes are extreme in uh, this relative Morricone. But now we know that this is a general thing, the relative Morricone of a morphism is extremal in the absolute Morricone of the variety. Okay? So 
particular is LIs generate extreme arrays of the Morricone of this variety here. So you had, uh, you, you knew that uh, uh, this, this Morricone had this, uh, this number of extreme arrays by the Morricone chamber decomposition of the blow up in, of PM in M plus two points. And uh, this, this argument here uh, proves that uh, the allies, which are exactly the number you want to have, generates, uh, generate the exact number of extreme arrays. So that the Morricone, in the end, uh, is uh, going to be generated by, uh, by these F curves. Okay? I think I'm done.